Okay, so in this problem it says Steve went on vacation to Lake Tahoe. While there he took a yacht ride. A yacht's like a big boat. While standing on the yacht, he spit up into the air and watched the spit fly up into the air and back down to the ground. Really, it shouldn't say down to the ground. It should say down to the water. The spit's height in feet Y is dependent on time on time in seconds after being spit X and can be modeled in the function. Now, with that information, they want you to answer the four questions below. Let's look at the four questions they're asking. How many seconds after taking off will the spit hit the water? So, what we're saying, guys, is we're saying we've got a guy in a boat, okay? We've got a guy in a boat right here, in a yacht, and he spits up into the air, and the spit comes back down to the water, right? That's what's happening, okay? Now, the questions they're asking are, how far until the spit hits the what? The water, okay? So that's the x-intercept, isn't it? And then they're wanting to know about the maximum height of the spit. Well, maximum and minimums always happen at the what? Vertex. So we're going to need to know the vertex. And then they say, how high was the spit when it started its flight? Well, starting points in equations are your y-intercept. And so we need to calculate our y-intercept, our x-intercept, and our vertex. It's that simple. Okay? So let's go back to the equation. Let's look at our equation. Y'all see it? Here's our equation. Now, it's very easy since the equation is in standard form. Say standard form. Standard form. Okay? Because it's in standard form you know that the C value is always your y-intercept when the equation's in standard form. So there's my y-intercept, 17.5, right there. Now, let's, the next thing let's do is let's calculate the vertex, okay? So you can see the equation, and you know your vertex is always going to be an ordered pair with an x and a y, okay? Now, the x value of the vertex is always negative b over 2 times a, right? And so in this case, b is 4.5. Can y'all see it right here? There's your b. And so I have negative 4.5 all over 2 times a, which is negative 1. And so I have negative 4.5 over negative 2 which equals positive 2.25. Now, that gives us the x value of the vertex, but it did not provide us with the what? Say y value. So in order for me to find the y value, I've got to take my x value and plug it in for x everywhere I see an x in the equation to get my y output. So I've got y equals negative and then 2.25 all squared plus 4.5 times 2.25 plus 17.5. And so what we need to do is we need to calculate 2.25 squared and then put the negative in front plus all this multiplied plus 17.5. Okay, so when you evaluate all this right here, you should get y equals 22.5. 5625. Okay, so that's my y value. So in the y value right here, I'm going to write 22.5625. And so now look at my vertex. Isn't she pretty? Okay, but we need to know what each part of the vertex means, don't we? Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to mark my vertex. What was it again? It was 2.25 and? So there's your vertex. So now look at what we know so far. We know the y-intercept right here, and we know the vertex right here, don't we? All that's left is to know the x-intercept. Well, in order for us to know the x-intercept, we plug a zero in for what? 
No, if you want the x-intercept, you plug a zero in for what? Y. y. So I'm going to take my equation, negative x squared plus 4.5x plus 17.5, and I'm going to set it equal to zero because you can see right here it was equal to y, and I put a zero in for the y. So now how do I solve a quadratic equation like that? that all that is is a quadratic equation. What is it? Complete the square. We could complete the square. So y'all said complete the square. So what's the first thing I would do to complete the square? Subtract. You would divide everything by negative 1 because the number in front of the x squared must be positive 1. Now when I divide everything by negative 1, I have x squared minus what? 4.5x. Minus 17.5 equals what? Zero. Doesn't equal negative zero. There's no such thing as negative zero. Now what do I do to com now what do I do to complete the square, people? Good. Add 17.5 to both sides. And so I have x squared minus 4.5x. Leave a space equals. 17.5, leave another space, right? And so now I need to solve this, don't I? What goes in the blank? B over 2 squared, very good. So I'm going to calculate over here B, which is negative 4.5, over 2, all squared. So y'all calculate what B over 2 squared is for me. And so we get 5, so I'm going to add 5, 0 0.0625 to both sides. 5.0625 to both sides. And so I've completed the square, but now I need to factor the left side. So I've got parentheses and another parentheses equals. Do me a favor, add up 17.5 and 5.0625, and what do you get? 22.5625. And then in the parentheses, I've got x and x. Whatever the first sign is always goes in both. And I take the square root of the 5.0625, and it goes in both. So what do I put in there? 2.25 in both. Now, I've got x minus 2.25 times x minus 2.25. That's the same thing as x minus 2.25 all what? squared equals 22.5625. And what do I do now to solve for x? Square root both sides like this. And so I have x minus 2.25 equals what? 4.75. And I also have x minus 2.25 equals Negative 4.75, good. And then I'll add 2.25 to both sides here. And so I have x equals, it looks like, 7. And right here I'll add 2.25 to both sides. And it looks like x equals negative 2.5. Now, look at your two x-intercepts. 7 and negative 2.5. I want to go back to the graph that we've been using, and I'm going to mark those on the graph, okay? And so it looks like the spit does something like that. So this x-intercept right here is negative 2.5, and that x-intercept right there is 7. Now, which one of them do we actually use? 7 because it's 7 what? seconds, and there's no such thing as negative 2.5 seconds, right? So now you've got all your information, right? So now let's answer our questions based on the information that's there. How many seconds after takeoff will the spit hit the water? Seven seconds, right? The landing on the water is your x-intercept. How many seconds after being spit will the spit reach its maximum height? Yeah, let's go look at our vertex. So in our vertex, does the 2.25 mean how many seconds, or does the 22.5625 mean the seconds? 2.25. Yeah, look at our graph. 
what we're saying is when X is 2.25, which is about right here, the maximum occurs up here, right? And so 2.25 is how many seconds after he spit that it reached the max. So it took 2.25 seconds after he spit that it reached its maximum height. Well, what is the maximum height of the spit? How high up in the air did it get? Yeah, the Y value of the vertex, 22 point what? And that's going to be feet, right? That's not feet. And then the last question says, approximately how high up was the spit when it began flying? 17.5 feet. Now, explain to me how the spit could be so high when it started. Yeah, he's standing on a boat. And then he's probably like six feet tall, so the boat, the boat might be 11 feet off the, off the water. It's a yacht. It's a big boat. And then he's standing six feet tall, so he's about 17 feet high when he spits the spit, right? Now, that's some major flying spit right there, isn't it? Okay? Look at what we're saying. We're saying that if we did a stopwatch, it took seven seconds before the spit came back down to the water. We're saying at 2.25 seconds, it hit its max. And we're saying it went 22 feet off the ground. Okay, and then it started at 17.5 feet, right? So if we look at our picture, we're saying this. We're saying here we are at 17.5 feet high, right? And we spit all the way up here to 22, right? And it hits that after 2.25 seconds. And then it rolls all the way back down and boom, after seven seconds it hits back to the floor, right? Right? 